viewer has asked the following. Since you seem to take requests for videos and have never made one, I'd like for you to talk about the so-called Akashic Records, which are frequently talked about by some people. Although it has become the new New Age thing to sell books, like the Law of Attraction, I think there are some older writers who also talked about this, like Manley P. Hall and Helena Blavatsky, if I'm not mistaken. So what are these records? Do they really exist? Is it really related to Akasha? Or is it related to the mental or astral planes? Can you really acquire information from it? like books or historical events or whatever. And if you can, with how much clarity can you acquire that info? Like, can you try to go as far as back as when the dinosaurs walked the earth? Or is it limited to specific time frames, etc.? I mean, knowing you, you could go on for quite a long time on this matter, and I would watch all of it. Laugh out loud. Okay. Um... Oh, God, Akashic Records. Um, <clears throat> the, the term Akashic, the idea of the Akashic Records really first gained popularity with Blavatsky. And although I don't think she actually used the term Akashic Records, pretty much everyone subsequent to her did use the term Akashic Records. Manaki Hall, Rudolf Steiner, basically the late Victorian uh, uh, metaphysicians. You know, it was part of their metaphysics. Um, and no, it has absolutely nothing to do with the Akasha. That is not what the Akasha is. The Aka And, oh, the whole term itself is just ridiculous. <laughs> it's sort of comedic. Um, <clears throat> so there are no Akashic records. There is no big book that you go and flip through in the Akasha. Um, what there is, though, there is something that could be described by someone who didn't know what they were talking about as the Akashic Records. Um, but again, it has nothing to do with the Akasha. So, what there is, the... Uh, the temporal realm in which we live, where we have past, present, future, etc. The, you know, moment in the history goes back and infinite and forward and infinite, and etc. That temporal realm is part of the universe, but not the whole universe. There is, outside of the temporal realm, the eternal realm. The temporal realm exists as part of the eternal realm, but the eternal realm uh, <clears throat> it's, it's seen, it exists as part of the eternal realm, but it is a discrete whole. All of time is contained in like a bubble, as it were. Um, <clears throat> it's a separate thing, okay? In the eternal realm, from the eternal perspective, all of time occurred, occurs, is occurring in one single moment. It's all there. Everything that from our perspective has happened or will happen is all right there. Complete. Whole. Fait accompli. From the eternal perspective. So, from the eternal perspective, which is above the Akasha, the Akasha is sort of that, that membrane that exists between the eternal realm and the temporal realm, where... All that is contained within the eternal realm becomes manifest in as the temporal realm. The uh, <clears throat> undifferentiated differentiates in the Akasha, that is the, the, 
the realm where the differentiation occurs is the akasha and below the akasha is the temporal realm where the differentiation has already occurred if that has made any sense to you at all <laughs> so from the eternal perspective this is the perspective of the greater self bina <clears throat> hokma and kether okay so from the eternal perspective in other words, as your greater self, you can peer down into the temporal realm and see whatever part of the temporal realm you want to see. But seeing is not the right word because every time the eternal realm enters the temporal realm, it becomes the temporal realm. See, that is what the temporal realm is. It's the eternal realm manifesting itself. Oh, it's just words are very difficult to, uh, to really make this make any sense at all. So, <clears throat> To put it simply, one can look into the temporal realm and view, experience, any moment within the temporal stream, okay? Any moment in history, you know, whether past, present, or future, because there is no past, present, or future from the eternal realm. Oh, that's only a temporal perspective. Okay, so to retain in your temporal awareness any memory of what the greater self has perceived in that stream of time, you've got to translate that in your awareness into terms that your temporal awareness will be able to translate, you know, to understand, okay? So you've got to put a date on it. You've got to put it into some sort of historical sequence. Um, and depending on when and where, I mean, because not just human experience is available here in, um, uh, you know, the temporal realm, but everything is there. So you've got to, first of all, be able to zero in on a specific human experience, if that's what you're going for. Like you want to look back on the planet Earth during the time of the dinosaurs. Well, you've got to zero in on that. Um, and it's... It takes a fair intellect to be able to do that. Let's put it that way. Um, <clears throat> so, let's say you zero in on it. So then you have an experience of what it's like in the time of dinosaurs. Now you've got to translate that in your awareness, in your consciousness, to your temporal awareness so that you can then, after the experience, write down what it was like during the time of the dinosaurs. Okay, there's a lot of room for error between a greater's experience of that moment in time and a temporal individual's experience of that moment of time. For the temporal individual, you're limited by your biology, by what you can see with your to physical eyes, because that's the only thing you're going to be able to translate in your consciousness back to, you know, your temporal awareness. It only works on, uh, you know, these five senses. <clears throat> okay? But the greater self has a much broader perception than that. So, you've got to squeeze that all down into a temporal 
<clears throat> awareness, okay? So, <clears throat> I guess what I'm trying to say is it's just not as easy as going to the, ten, the Akashic Records and looking it up in the book and saying, oh, well, this is what happened in 1843, <laughs> you know, <clears throat> it, things don't work that way. Now, there's also a different it is possible to access the greater awareness uh, from the temporal realm through certain forms of psychism. Um, to uh, to have a certain form of clairvoyance, essentially, uh, or or clear knowing um, that is rooted in a greater self perspective. But you, as a temporal awareness, are not raising your awareness to the greater self and your self-willing this perception, what it is, is you are connecting through a more passive way with the greater awareness. Um, again, words are very difficult here. At least I'm not having much success today. Oh, how to put this into words. So, you go to a psychic and they, you know, have a psychic perception, you know, which is basically a clairvoyant perception of the dinosaurs roaming the earth. And they relate that to you. That is one form of connection, a passive connection, if you will, to that, uh, that ability to access information. And f from there, from the psychic, the clairvoyant sort of perspective, the, the passive perspective, it can seem like an Akashic record. You know, I have this psychic, you know, perception of this, you know, certain thing happening in the past. Um, that is very unreliable. You have really no factual basis for it other than your own uh, sense of confidence in your psychic perceptions. Okay, The perception of the greater self there is just absolutely no doubt that what you are perceiving is objectively accurate. The only difficulty comes in the translation to the, the temporal awareness. That just takes practice, time doing it. If that's something you want to do. There's not much benefit in doing that. It doesn't change anything in the present moment <clears throat> because here we are in the present moment <laughs> so okay i hope that was confusing enough for you for today welcome to 2023 <laughs> bye bye